All right, kiddos, we are on unit two, week five. Um, and our story for this week is called, So You Want to Be President. So you should have your word collectors out to a fresh and open page and ready to learn some new vocabulary. Our story this week is, So You Want to Be President. All right, our first word um, for this week is politics. So a sentence using politics that goes with the picture on this page is, she was interested in politics, so she decided to run for class president. So think about, look at this picture, um, look at this sentence, and use those clues to try and think about what do you think politics means? If you know, what do you think politics means? So politics is the work of government or management of public business. Okay, so if you see, we have some pictures on here. Um, we have a sign that says vote. Um, we have a picture of Abraham Lincoln. So we think about presidents. We think about voting. Um, we think about campaigning, trying to get people to vote for you or elect you to do something. Okay, so think about how could someone in our community be involved in politics? Okay, so it just, doesn't just include being the president, but think about politics just within Blooming Prairie and with our, in our community, okay? Maybe even within our school, okay? Like on the student council, okay? That would be kind of a form of politics in our school. If you think about the mayor, we have a mayor in our town of Blooming Prairie. That would be an example of politics. Our next word is constitution. Sentence using the word constitution is the U.S. Constitution was written in 1787. Okay, so if you look at our picture here, okay, you kind of see um, some paper and you can tell that that paper looks really old. It's kind of discolored. Um, if you also look at the handwriting on it, um, you can tell it's done in a really fancy cursive, which we don't see a lot these days. And you also see ink and a feather. Think about what does Constitution mean? The Constitution is a written set of principles by which the United States, States is governed. So if you look at this word principles, okay, we're not talking um, like principle like Mr. Stalo. We're looking at principles. It ends differently with a P-L-E-S. Okay, and principles are kind of like rules. Okay, or ex expectations or things that we need to follow. Okay, so I want you to think about why is the Constitution important to our country? Okay, so if you think about some of the um, rights on the Constitution is like freedom of speech is something on our Constitution. Okay, so freedom to say what you want to without get, getting in trouble. Um, freedom, freedom of the press. So people can write about whatever they want in the news. Okay, so think about why do we need a constitution in our country? Why is having a set of rules or principles important to a country? Our next word is solemnly. So a sentence using the word solemnly would be, the president swears solemnly to do his best as president of the United States. Okay, so if you look at this picture, kind of look at um, his facial expression. So this is a picture of President, former President Barack Obama. Okay, so I want you to kind of look at his facial express expression, and that will kind of give you a clue of what solemnly means. Okay, so he swears solemnly to do his best as president. At his face, and he's solemnly swearing to do his best as president. He's showing, showing dignity. Um, so solemnly means seriously, earnestly, or with dignity. Okay, so if we look and he's serious, right? He doesn't look like he's goofing around in that picture. He seems like he's very seriously um, thinking about being a good president. Okay, so I want you to look at this picture on this page and 
think about how would you solemnly say the Pledge of Allegiance? So what would your face look like? Or how would you feel saying the Pledge of Allegiance, right? You're probably um, not laughing, right? You're probably not elbowing your buddy next to you, goofing around, laughing, right? You're being very serious and you're saying things with dignity because it's something that means a lot to you and your country, okay? Or how would you solemnly shake the hand of a soldier? So if you think about our Veterans Day program, Okay, if you got a chance to shake the hand of a veteran, okay, or talk to a veteran, how um, would you solemnly shake their hand and thank them for their service? Okay, you would do that seriously, um, earnestly, and with dignity. Our next word is responsibility. So a sentence with the word responsibility would be, it was the babysitter's responsibility to feed the baby. Okay, so that kind of goes with this picture on this page. So think about what responsibility means. It's probably a very familiar word to you, or it should be. Picture, it's this babysitter's responsibility to take care of this baby by feeding it. Okay. So responsibility is an obligation or the act of taking care of someone or something. Okay, so taking care of someone or something. So if we look back at so I want you to think about what is a responsibility you have at home, okay? You might think of it as maybe a chore, okay? What kind of responsibilities you have? Maybe it's to let the dog out or feed the dog every night. Uh, maybe it's to do the dishes or maybe it's to get your homework done or get your um, reading 25 minutes done right when you get home. So think about what responsibilities do you have at home? Our next word is humble. So a sentence using the word humble would be, this girl has a shy, humble smile. Think about what does the word humble mean? A picture of this girl. She seems very kind. She seems shy. She has a very welcoming and warming smile. So she has a very humble smile. She doesn't look prideful. Um, she looks very kind and humble. We could probably say that humble in vain would be. So humble means not proud or modest. So when I was looking at this word, I thought of our um, old vocabulary word um, from quite a few weeks ago, um, the word prideful. Okay, and we know that when someone is prideful, um, they're very, you could say like into themselves. They're very prideful and they kind of like to brag about themselves and they think they're just, almost better than other people. So humble, humble would be an antonym of prideful. So someone who is humble is not prideful, okay? So um, if we, so an example would be, you would be humble if you won the basketball game but did not brag to others about winning, okay? So if you were humble, you would win, but then you'd say to the other people on the team, hey, really good job, you guys worked really hard or you played really well. Um, so you wouldn't be going around bragging to people saying, yeah, we won the game, we're the best team here, and things like that. So someone who is humble is not proud. The next word um, is the word vain. Okay, so a sentence using vain would be, she was acting vain by constantly taking selfies. So think about if you saw someone who just constantly was on their phone taking selfies of themselves, um, they would be vain. So think about what vain means. So vain means having too much pride in your looks, abilities, or other qualities. Okay, so if we think about that word, of one another. Okay, vain kind of means prideful too, right? That word prideful we just talked about. Because you're having a lot of pride in your looks and abilities and other qualities. So if we look at these pictures that I found to show the, the word vain... Um, we have someone who is looking in the mirror at themselves. Um, we have Gaston from Beauty and the Beast, who he is a very vain character. If you've ever seen Beauty and the Beast, you know, he thinks himself, he loves himself, and he thinks he is just the best person ever. Um, and then I love me. That's kind of just, you just think you're the best at everything. Okay? So if you're vain about your looks, think about how would you act while looking at yourself in the mirror? Okay, we can kind of look at that picture right there, but think about what would you do or act while looking at yourself in the mirror if you were a vain person. 
Our last word for this week is howling. Okay. So the coyote was howling at the moon. This. Okay, so in the past, we've had the word coyote as one of our vocabulary words, um, and now our vocabulary word is howling. Coyote was howling at the moon. Howling that we see in this picture. Okay, so howling actually has um, two different meanings. It's a multi-meaning word, okay? The howling that you're familiar with and the means giving a loud, long cry. So just like this picture I have on this page of coyote, um, as a verb, howling means giving a loud, long cry, which is the meaning that you're probably most familiar with. Okay, Howling as an adjective, though, means very great. Okay, so if you look at this picture of some kids right here, um, they look like they're having a good time, right? They're having a fun time. They're having a very great time. So you could maybe say, oh, we had a howling great time at um, so-and-so's birthday party last weekend. Okay, so howling could also mean very great. So it has two different meanings for howling. All right, Kodo, so that is all of our vocabulary words for this week for our story, So You Want to Be President. Um... Make sure that you are going back in the video if you need to, if you miss some of those definitions um, or would like to look back at some of those pictures, you may go ahead and do that. Make it a great day, kiddos.